Yes, welcome back to the next one. The factors on which the resistance of a conductor depends. How the resistance is depends upon, right? For example, the resistance is mainly depends upon length and area of cross section. If length increases, resistance increases. If area increases, resistance decreases. Again, stress this point. When length increases, resistance increases. Area increases, resistance will decrease. So, for your better understanding, in your classroom, as if that you have double two side door. Okay, you have you need to close two doors for closing your classroom. We are closing single door and another door is open. How many students can pass? Can we able to pass two students? No, right? Only one student can be able to pass that single side, right? Suppose if you have opened that two side, both sides, at a time two students can pass, right? Yes. So the area increases, the flow of electrons is easy to move, right? That's what area increases, resistance will decrease. So resistance decreases in the sense current will easily through go. If length is increased, the resistance is high, the current is not easy to move because the resistance is high, current will decrease. Right? Okay. Now move on to this one. The resistance R depends upon its length directly proportional. Directly proportional means length increases, resistance increases. And the resistance depends upon its area of R, area of cross section, inversely proportional. That means area increases, resistance decreases. R area decreases, resistance increases, right? So this is increases means this will decrease. This is increases means this will decrease. Area decreases, resistance increases, right? So like the way we need to understand, right? And here I write R is directly proportional to L. L is length of the wire, A is area of cross section. R is directly proportional to L and inverse proportional to area of cross section. When removing this proportional, we need to add one resist constant. That constant is called resistivity R. That resistivity is mainly depends upon the nature of the material, the temperature, and the nature of the material alone. It depends upon. Try to understand. R is depends upon length, area, temperature, and nature of the material, and the resistivity is only depend depends upon depends upon the nature of the material and temperature. Right, but the resisti resistivity is depends upon length, area, temperature, and nature of the material. Right, oh. and rho is called resistivity of the material. The SI unit of rho resistivity is ohm meter. How to remember rho is equal to? We can write rho is equal to R A by L. So what is the SI unit for resistance? Ohm. What is the SI unit for area? Meter square. So what is the SI unit for length? Meter. So you can cancel that will use ohm meter. Don't lug up any SI unit in the physics part. So the resistivity has the SI unit of ohm meter. And the resistivity varies with the temperature. Definitely the resistivity definitely varies with the temperature. Okay. Now how we are saying this topic, right? Length increases area. Of, length increases area. Resistivity increases, area increases, resistivity decreases, right? So, for better understanding, I am going to do some small activity here. Uh, this is one of the part of activity in your textbook. Here I have a battery. The battery is connected with X and Y. That is a small gap here. And from Y, I connected a meter. The ammeter negative is connected to T and is connected to negative element of the battery. So, here we have gap, right? Yes. I am going to choose four different cases. One, two, three, four. First three is R copper wire, and the fourth one is nichrome. Right? Copper is metal, nichrome is alloys, nickel chrome. Right? So copper is metal, and nichrome is alloys. Okay. First case, second case, third case, fourth case. First case, I choose one particular length area of cross section. Right, its length is L and the area of cross section is A. As in that, one meter length, one meter square area. 
so I am going to connect here and switch, uh, close the key and note down the current path. Yes, and second case I have 2L but area of cross section is same. 2L means 2 meter, area remains same, 1 meter square, right? And for the case also I connected this point and note down the current value from that ammeter. And third case, I am going to use the same length, 1 meter only, but I am going to change the 2 times of area of cross section. 2 meter square I am going to use. I am going to connect it here and note down the ammeter value. Okay. And the fourth case, I change the material. Instead of copper wire, I am going to use nichrome wire, which has the same length, the same area of cross section, what we have used in copper wires. So, 1 meter and 1 meter meter square of area that used in nichromires. Nichromire has 1 meter length, 1 meter square area. This is very resemblance to copper wire. So I am going to connect here and note down the ammeter value. Now tell me which one will have high resistance, which one have low resistance. Right? So first I talk about copper and then I tell about nichrome, then I will compare with copper and nichrome. Right? Among the, in copper we have three different cases. Among the which one have greater resistance? This one, right? Because R is directly proportional to L. So length increases means resistance is increases. Resistance increases means current will decreases. So the least current will provide by this second case. And which one will give more current? So this is length is 1 meter, area is 1 meter square, but here length is 1 meter, area is 2 meter square. So area is, I am going to increase area increases means resistance will decreases. So resistance decreases means current will easily pass, so it will use more current. So this case is use more current, okay. And this one is normal in between these two cases, yes. Now move on to nichrome wire. So the same 1 meter length, 1 area of meter square, I am going to put it here, note on the current value. Now, the second case, we want to compare copper and nichrome here. So what will, which one will give less resistance, copper wire or nichrome wire? Yes, copper wire will give low resistivity and nichrome will give high resistivity, right? So due to that, the copper can be used in transmission purpose because of low resistivity. And the alloys can be used in some other techniques, bulbs, toaster. So that's and all you can be able to use this nichrome wires, right? Okay, so this is the concept here. Now we move on to here. Metals and alloys will have the resistivity in the order of 10 power minus 8 ohm meter to 10 power minus 6 ohm meter. So metals means copper nichrome. Metals is copper and alloys is nichrome here. And these are all called, we are saying, good conductors. It conducts the current as well as heat. And the second case, insulator. So insulator has the range of 10 to the power 12 ohm meter to 10 to the power 17 ohm meter. So the metals are using in transmission purpose. Copper and aluminum we are using as transmission purpose. Whereas the alloys we can use in electrical heating device, toaster, everything, because at high temperature, the, uh, the alloys do not, do not oxidize. The alloys do not oxidize at high temperature. That's why we are using alloys in heaters, any, any type heating elements that we are going to use only the alloys, not exact conductors or anything. And for tungsten we are using in bulk, right? Due to high resistivity we are producing some using in bulk, tungsten, right? I hope you understand well this concept. And see you in the next video. Thank you.